Hey guys, what's happening? So, in one of my previous videos, I showed you this, uh, you know, commercial grade 6090 uh, CNC router here, and uh, I'm currently in the, the process of converting this thing to Mach 3. Well, it's already been converted, you know, to Mach 3. Um, but one of the things I also want to do is create a self-contained uh, coolant system. So if you look at the spindle, it's a uh, 24,000 K RPM spindle and uh, it actually is, it's water cooled or liquid cooled and um, I, you know, I didn't want to have uh, like a five gallon bucket just laying around um, I really want like a self contained unit that I can I can wheel around and not have to deal with buckets um, there is actually a, a table here which may I'll make a video separate about that you know like the the water cooling system or I mean like the the coolant for the cutting coolant but um, this video will be about the uh, RPM, uh, or excuse me, the uh, spindle uh, cooling system. So I've already thought this out. It's been a couple of weeks. Um, I already bought some parts for it. Uh, so I'm going to have a, this is like a pump from like a CPU cooler, like a computer CPU cooler. And it has like a reservoir. And um, the plastic, it feels pretty kind of like cheap plastic on the bottom here, but... Um, yeah, this mount is plastic. That, that kind of makes me a little nervous, but I guess I could have a 3D printer design something different for it. But all right, so that's going to be the reservoir. I mean, things I don't need to have like a. It's a, the reservoir is more of just like a buffer. So in case you lose water throughout, uh, let's say like evaporation or whatever, um, it's not a true like a. I mean, it's closed loop, but it's not like a true closed loop system. We are not going to lose. Uh, you know, like any sort of coolant. So there's actually like a return. You'll see it like once I get it going. But so just kind of like drips down. And then I got, uh, I think this was like probably 25. I'll put links down below of all this stuff. I think this is like 25 or 30. Um, and then I also got uh, two fans, 120 millimeter fans. And that goes to this right here. And this actually was an incredible deal on Amazon, 10 bucks. So this is actually like a, like a CPU cooler. And I'm gonna have two 120 millimeter fans that just, and this will actually be doing the actual cooling. You know, having the fans on it, and then I'm probably gonna need to. Um, I'm gonna probably run this off some kind of MOSFET here, like this right here, like a 3D printer MOSFET. So I want this to be controlled by um, the output, the uh, the. Uh, forward uh, output like I'm never gonna go in reverse I'm only gonna go in forward so uh, so what happens is when I, when I activate the spindle which tells the VFD to turn on it's gonna activate the actual cooling system the pump and the uh, all the fans and stuff so it's not just running there 24 7 when I have it powered on it only turns on when I turn the spindle on um, what else do I got I think I'm missing a package here to do this thing. <laughs> then I actually have a I want to be able to know for sure um, I want to have a flow meter, so I'm going to splice into that right there, and I want a flow meter so I can see, okay, is this thing actually spinning? So I have it, if I have it turned on and I don't see this thing spinning around, this flow meter, I'll know there's a problem and I won't, I won't run the spindle. But I actually have some air hose. This is not a high pressure system. Because of this, the way this reservoir is set up, you know, it's not a high pressure system. Uh, so you don't really need so much of these compression fittings. These are just more like snap to connect um, fittings that were like pneumatic, which I already had already. Um, like, see that blue hose on the CNC machine? That's what it came with. Um, yeah, it's the same as this right here. This is actually the coolant right here. So, like I said, it's under high pressure, so you don't need to have like a this hardcore compression fitting here. Um, all right, then I gotta figure out what I mount in the back here. So, got a, quite a few things to figure out where I'm gonna mount it, and um, control it should be pretty basic. So I'm gonna have to probably create like a. I mean, this is 12 volt. The system is 24 volt. Um, so I guess I could use a buck converter, I guess, or I could, I could run off the 24 volt power supply, but I gotta think about that. So if I want to run a 24 volt, or uh, you have a separate 12 volt power supply, because you don't really want to, you know, you don't want a lot of stuff 
you know you don't want to send EMI back into the uh, the control board. So you should normally should have like a separate power supply for the actual like mockery board control board. You're going back to a separate earth ground. That way you're not actually uh, getting EMI back on the you know these these CNC controllers are very sensitive. But okay, cool. Yeah, I guess I don't have encoders. I don't know. It's not super high end, but all right. All right, here's a closer look. So I got this in here. Two 120 millimeter fans, a radiator, had a three 3D printing brackets, 3D print spacer here. Um, it's got to plumb everything in together. This all wrapped into 12 volt. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do a variable speed fan or not. Maybe we're gonna put like a penton potentiometer and uh, you know, be able to adjust the RPM. This is this is a two wire, so there's no uh, RPM control. And not a third, nor uh, not a pulse width modulated fan. Well, it doesn't. It could be pulse width modulated, but it's, I would need a separate controller. Um. All right, and then I just gotta fish these up here. Obviously, have the lines on the top here because you want you don't air trapped, so you want your air inlet and outlet. Not air, but uh, liquid inlet outlet on top, so that bubbles come out of the top. All right. So this will be the main feed goes into the actual pump going out. So I might go from the pump. I might the last stage might be cooling, so I might go pump to here and then back out to the thing over via here. Um, just because it goes through the cooling cycle before it goes into the spindle. All right. So I actually had to get a new pump with a pump body. That one split. So I got the one that was metal. So I'm going to just fill this up with tap water for now. Um, I mean, that's not going to be a... Because, I mean, in case there's, like, debris in there, I want to be able to get the debris out and not actually get it in, uh, mixed up with my coolant. So I might just use a car coolant or something, maybe. I'm just going to run in a, uh, <coughs> one of my, deep, my uh, computer power supplies. See right there? It's like a computer... Uh, what's it called? Mullet connector. All right, so I'm just going to put some tap water there. I'll run it. Yeah, plus if these hoses leak, I don't want the coolant going everywhere. In case I gotta change the design here. But one thing I noticed is that these hoses seem like they're very clogged up. Like it was really hard, and even just to blow in my mouth. I mean, I, even with disconnected from the spindle, uh, so I don't know if there's a kink in here or what, but yeah, it was really hard to blow through these tubes. All right, let's get this going here, see what happens. I have no idea what's gonna happen. Plug it in like that. All right. Okay, cool. I don't see any water returning yet. That's one of my concerns is that it's going to overflow this re reservoir. Um, because I do actually have it lower. So I'm trying to keep the bubbles, you know, up high. Alright, I'm going to keep on filling the water. Alright. No leaks so far. I'm obviously going to fill the holes up. Um, but I'm gonna use. I'm just trying to use my air compressor to blow the, the, the water out. The uh, let's go this way. I just want to make sure I get a lot of debris out. There is debris. I don't know. So, all right, let's go to the spin real fast. Look for leaks over here. Yeah, these these tubes are pneumatic toes. They're rated air. Except, I mean, I know I'm getting flow, but it's not going fast enough to spin that thing. Maybe I should have them on the outbound. See, I can get it to spin. See, there's half of it's filled with air, though. Right, so we're looking a lot better now. I reversed the flow. So I made this the inlet, going that one that way. Yeah, I got rid of the bubbles. So, so I just put it here to reverse it, but I also noticed the flow right here is a lot better, too, now. The return, I'm getting a lot more in the return. All right, guys, done with the closed loop system here. Show you what I did here. So, I changed the pump out. Um, the original one had like a plastic uh, right here and it was just weak. So, small reservoir. Um, fans in here, it's all wired in. I have the 212 wired into here. Um, come back over to the electronics here. All right, so here is the, uh, I'm actually doing another video about the Mach 3 conversion, so I'll get more into detail of that. But the way I have it wired, 
is that when the uh, the forward relay is triggered, triggering the VFD up there, it basically is trigger, triggering the solid state relay, which is a uh, you know it's a hundred or two hundred forty AC, um, and that controls. Then actually, this goes in this little AC adapter that I uh, repurposed. It's like a twelve volt four four amp. And that's actually what feeds the pump and the fans. But the reason why I have it triggered like that is because so when I turn the I don't have it just running 24 7 as soon as I turn on the, on the machine. It's only running when that, the actual spindle is moving. I'll show you that real fast. So I'm, all, I'm just finishing my Mach 3 conversion right now. But uh, actually, the next video after, after this, I'll probably go through in depth and how I converted this thing. Okay, so let's turn this 24,000 RPM right here. Turn the spindle on right here. So you can tell as soon as I turn the spindle on, I can see my flow meter here. So that way I always know if I'm getting flow or not. You know, as soon as I turn the spindle on, this should spin. If it doesn't spin, then I have a problem. Um, all right, let's go back. All right, see that solid state relay activated? So like we said, when the Ford, when the, the Mach 3 controller triggers the Ford relay on the VFD, it's also tied into my solid state relay, which then powers the 12 volt AC adapter which then powers the pump and the fans. All right, pretty cool. All right, well, that's how I did a closed loop system. Um, I mean, just the way I did it. I mean, everybody does it differently, so. I mean, I had to kind of do it based on my machine, so. All right, awesome, now I can start using this thing. Yeah, I didn't want that big five gallon bucket, you know what I mean, like a five big bucket, you know? I'm, I'm, what I'm trying to accomplish for this system is a self-contained system that I can actually move around on wheels that will have the cooling system, you know, you know, self-contained spindle cooling system, but I also want a water cooling system that's gonna fit underneath that's gonna be all self-contained. All right, so maybe I'll go on the next video, I'll show you how I did the Mach 3 conversion.